Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on, church, let's put your hands together and let's bless the name of the Lord on this morning because how many of you know that he is worthy to be praised. Come on, put your hands together and let's give God the glory. Gather your family, gather your friends and come on in and let's prepare our hearts and mind for worship for this truly is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church. We are so excited to have you worship with us on today. We have curated a wonderful worship experience for you and we hope that you will join in with us as we celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now, let us go to God in prayer. Eternal and everlasting Father, Father God in the matchless and powerful and wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. God, we come before you, God, on this day, first of all, just to say thank you. Lord God, we thank you for life, we thank you for health, and we thank you for strength. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you shall continue to do in our lives. Continue to lift the clouds from the north, the south, the east, and the west, God. Continue to encourage us to let us know that we can go where you will have us to go, do what you have, will have us to do, and be who you have called us to be, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. So we lift up, God, all of the persons that are listening to this broadcast under the sound of my voice and even those that will listen to it later God even those that you would others will tell about your word uh, God we thank you Lord Jesus for all that you've done and all that you shall continue to do God we would bless your name on high in Jesus name we pray amen Not an hour of another day, but at this moment with my arms outstretched, I need you to make a way as you have done so many times before. Through a window or an open door, Stretch my hands to thee. Come rescue me. I need you right away. I need you now. I need you now. I need. Another second, another minute, not an hour of another day. But Lord, I need you right away. The agony of being alone, fear of doing things. Not a 
not another second or another minute. Hey, they both shut up. Not an hour of another day. But Lord, I need you. But Lord, I need you. Do anybody need him? But Lord, I need you. Right away. It's offering time. We want to thank you so much for your generosity, for allowing Boynton Chapel to continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. We thank you for giving your offering and tithes to us as we go out into a world and tell our community that God will provide everything that they have need of. So we want to encourage you to give your donations or your offering to us through Givelify at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church or through Zale at Boynton Chapel UMC at gmail.com or you may mail your tithes and offering in to us at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church 2812 Milby Street Houston Texas 77004 again we thank you for allowing us to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ Somebody may be going through something, just think, say, What do you do when you've done all who you can do? Seems like you can't make it through. And what do you say when your friends turned away? You're all alone. Tell me what do you give when you're giving your all and seems like you can't make it through. Child, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. Yes, I heard done all you can, you just stay. Tell me how do you handle the guilt from your past? Tell me how can you deal with the shame? And how can you smile? While your heart has been broken and filled with pain, filled with pain. Tell me, what do you give when you give in your own land? Seems like you can't make it through. Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stay and watch the Lord see you the roof. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand and be sure. Do not entangle with the bondage again. You just stand. God has a purpose. Yes, God has a plan. Tell me what do I do when you've done all you can? And it seems that you can't make it through. Child, you just stand. You just stay here.
with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 22 through 32. Again, that's Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 32. And it reads as follows. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous and he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. This is the word of God for the people of God. I would like to tag this passage of scripture, uh, all eyes on Jesus, all eyes on Jesus. Do you all remember my friend Forrest Gump? His life is one adventure after another, one heartache after another, one success after another, one question after another. He gains a lot of what little wisdom he has from his mama. She teaches Forrest the ways of life through such wise, clever little sayings that would even make King Solomon proud. One of the catchiest of her phrases is, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You never know what is going to happen in our lives. To an extent, 
Church life is a big futuristic journey, a mystery, a journey of road filled with curves and construction, detours and hills and spotlights and stoplights. We never know what is going to happen until it happens. But one thing I do know for sure, there are many things about tomorrow that I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. Church in our text today, Jesus has just finished the feeding of the 5,000 and has sent the multitudes away. Jesus withdrew from the people again to pray. And while he sent the disciples in the boat to the other side, note here with me, it said that Jesus went up to a mountain to pray. Church, don't miss this. Jesus had already prayed for the disciples before the storm arose. Guess what? Jesus has already prayed for you and I, no matter what we're going through. In John's Gospel, chapter 17, Jesus prays to the Father for himself, his disciples who were with him, and for all his disciples and followers. He said to them, do not take them out of this world, but Father, keep them from the evil one. No matter how the odds seem against us, church, please understand that the Lord is always on our side. If God answers our prayers, surely he answers the prayers of the Son of God. You see, the disciples were in the boat going to the other side. A severe storm arose. The disciples were going through a storm out on the lake in the darkness of the fourth watch, which is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. The disciples think that they see a ghost and cry out in fear. You see, it was Jesus who was walking on the water. And immediately Jesus speaks to them and says, see, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. This sounds like fear, doesn't it? Fear is false evidence appearing real. Let me say that again. Fear is is false evidence appearing real. In other words, church, fear is what we get when we take a physical inventory of the things going on around us and begin to doubt God's ability to be and do all that he says that he would do and can do. Fear is when we begin to have more faith in the adversary's ability to have victory in our lives than we have faith in God's ability to have the final word. Fear is when we fail to realize that God has brought us this far, has not brought us this far to leave us, but he will be with us no matter what we're going through. Church, I just want you to understand this morning. I'm here to tell you that God is a faithful God, and I'm here here to tell you this morning that he is a good God and he who has begun a good work in you will see it through to the end church but so many times we reach situations in our lives that that have us our knees knocking and our hearts racing and tears flowing but regardless of the situation regardless of how bad things look my God says that he will fight your battle for you no matter what you're going through. My God says be of good courage, church, that he has not given us the spirit of fear, that false evidence appearing real, but he has given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So it does not matter what the adversary tries to bring your way. There can be mountains on the east, and fortresses on the west. There can be enemies at your back and a sea of despair out in front. But when it is all said and done, if God be for you, help me Jesus, who can stand against you? I don't know if you heard me this morning, but if God be for you, who can stand against you? Because greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. In the words of that old hymn, what have I to fear, what have I to dread, when I'm leaning on the everlasting arms? Church, I want to let you know that all you got to do is just wait on him. All you have to do is keep your hands in the hands of him because he is the same God 
that the psalmist talks about who pen, pencil the paper and says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comforteth me. It's the same God that will be your strength, your refuge and your present help. Help me, Jesus, in the time of trouble because he truly is just good like that. Church, I know that Things can get rough, but at some point, our faith in God ought to kick in to strengthen us in our hour of need. How many have you heard the song, Just Have a Little Bit More Faith? You see, faith in Greek means a conviction in the truthfulness of God. The Bible says God's word is true. He is not a man that he can lie. What God said he would do, he will do. Survey tells us that 80% of our culture are unwilling to take a faith risk. That means, of course, that only 20% are willing. I understand why society feels that many Christians are truly church potatoes. You see, the 11 disciples were boat potatoes, logically. We who sit in church and do nothing are pew potatoes. Pew potatoes are content to not getting involved in doing anything in God's, on God's program. You can't get them to work in ministry. You can't get them to do any kind of special projects. They don't want to do anything for God. They are content to come to church and sit in the pew and waste the gifts that God has blessed them with to bring glory to his kingdom. Church like Peter, we too are called to step out on faith, to get out of our comfort zones, to go out and to make disciples for the transformation of the world. We are to engage in risk-taking ministry, willing to change from the past to be effective in the present and in the future. We are called to stop arguing over who moved my cheese and to go out and find some new cheese. Peter didn't know that he could walk on water until he stepped out on the boat. When he, his foot hit the water, the miracle kicked in. So here are four principles for people who walk by faith. First of all, I want to encourage you, don't listen to the people in the boat. In other words, don't listen to the naysayers. You know who they are. All of the disciples in the boat did not follow Peter's walk of faith. The rest of them were satisfied with just sitting in the boat. Some people are satisfied with sitting in a comfort zone. Boat folk are satisfied with staying in the boat, but you can't let boat folk stop you from getting out of the boat. That's what's wrong with some of you now. You've been listening to boat folk. Stop listening to boat folk. Boat folk are folk that are not doing anything for God. They're not, they don't see want to see you do anything for God. They don't want to see God bless you in any way. Everybody in the boat is not walking with you on the water. Everybody don't want you to walk by faith. Some people are happy just walking by sight. I believe I'll say that again. Everybody don't want to walk by faith. Some people are happy walking by sight. Can't you just hear Doubting Thomas in the background telling Peter, man, you better stay in that boat. Peter, don't you be no fool up in here, up in here. You better stay in that boat. You know you've never walked on water before. What makes you think you can walk on water? Now, you better get rid of the naysayers. You know, I call those people who are naysayers, they're grasshoppers. They go around and they jump on different people and see who they can discourage. But we bind the spirit of the naysayers now and we walk on water as God has called us, help me Jesus, to walk. Next thing, don't look at the waves. You know the waves. Don't look at your circumstances. Sometimes we have ups and sometimes we have downs, but don't look at the circumstances. Sometimes you go left when you should have gone right and gone right when you should have gone left. Don't look at the circumstances. The Bible says that Peter started out well walking on the water, but after a short way, he became afraid and began to sink. The verse said he saw the wind boisterous. Now it was not the actual wind itself that he saw, but it was the effects of the wind. And then Peter started to worry. You know how we get. Circumstances come up. Things don't seem to go the way that we want them to go. So we began to worry, and that's when we began 
began to sink. Peter took his eyes off of Christ and instead put his eyes on his circumstances. Church, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but there's somebody that's listening to my voice that you have taken your eyes off of Christ and put them on your circumstances. And because your eyes are on your circumstances instead of on Christ, then you have started to sink in what you should have been walking on. So I want to encourage you this morning, stop sinking in your circumstances and and start walking on top of your circumstances. Stop sinking in your situation and start walking on top of your situation. Stop sinking in your condition and start walking on top of your condition. You see, church, Peter starts sinking in what he should have been walking on. Help me, Holy Ghost. You know there's some things that the, the enemy tries to keep us from trying to make us feel like we can't handle it. We can't do it. We can't accomplish it. We won't be successful. We won't make it. We can't buy the house. We can't get the new job. We can't have the car. We can't buy the clothes. We can't go on vacation. The enemy wants us to think that there's nothing that we can do without him. But we serve a God who's almighty, a God who's all knowing, a God who is all powerful. If we just keep our eyes on Jesus, keep your eyes on the prize, who is the prize is, is Jesus Christ, not the present. Keep your eyes on the present that God has for you, not the P-R-E-S-E-N-T, where you look for a present that you receive on a birthday or a present that you receive on a uh, Christmas day. But I'm talking about keep your eyes on the present. The present is Jesus the Christ. But you know, church, I believe that the devil had his hand in this somewhere. I believe that the devil tempted Peter to take his eyes off of Jesus. The devil will always tempt us to take our eyes off of Jesus. The devil wants us to walk by sight instead of walking by faith because he knows that if he could get us to walk by sight, then he can get us to go under when we should be going over. He can get us to go below when we should go above. He can get you to be less than when you can be more than. He can get you to give in to your same old temptations. He can get you to go down in that same old sin. But church, I just wanted you to know this morning, keep your eyes on Jesus. You've got to learn how to stay up. I mean, all the way up. And the way you stay up, church, is that you walk by faith. Yes, stay up. Don't look down at your feet. Keep your eyes on Jesus. But if by chance you start to waver and sink, come on, call out to Jesus. Thank God that Peter did not drown. While Peter was sinking, he had enough sense to start praying. And the Bible says, Peter cried saying, Lord, save me. When Peter's faith got weak and trouble came, he did not drown in his troubles. He did not give up in his troubles. He went to the Lord in prayer. Out of all that Peter had been through, he still had enough faith to pray through. And you know, my brothers and sisters, I was wondering this morning, out of all that you have been through, do you still have enough faith to pray? Do you still have enough faith to get a prayer through? Because if you still have enough faith, then you can get back up on your feet. If you still have enough faith, then you can pray your way up. Oh yes, church, Peter's faith is little faith, but it was enough faith to get a prayer through. Peter cried out to the Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. Church, I know that everything you do may not succeed, but that does not mean we quit trying. Nothing beats a failure but a try. So we keep on walking and calling on the name of Jesus to help us. As I end this sermon, church, let me go back to verse 27. Jesus said, be of good cheer, it is I. For the sake of the good English sense, most versions of the Bible translate Jesus' words into something like, it is I, or I am here, or it's me. But the Greek says only ego, emi, I am, 
When Moses asked God in the burning bush for his name, God said, tell them I am is the one that sent you. When God and Jesus more than once connects himself in, to this very same God, Jesus is God. You can be afraid of the winds and the waves, but what you doubt is whether Jesus is to be great. I am the son of the living God. He is the Lord of your life. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Jehovah Shalom, your peace. Jehovah Raha, your shepherd. El Shaddai, he's more than enough. Church, I just want to encourage you this morning. Is there anything too hard for God? With God, all things are possible. We must keep our eyes on Jesus, knowing that he is God all by himself. He can do what he said he would do. We can be what he says we will be, and we can do what he says we can do. So I offer this prayer to you this morning as we close. God of heaven, we thank you for today. You are the answer to prayer. What could we do if it wasn't for you? The way you have treated us and loved us and helped us, you have proven yourself over and over to be kind, to be merciful, and to be true. And God, as we look to you, there's a collection of homes and persons that are listening to me right now under the sound of my voice. You know the problems, you know the pain, you know the unhappiness, the fears and the perplexity, the stress, the sweat and strain, the broken hearts. So God, whatever the problem, you are greater than the problem. So Jesus, stretch out your hands on today, your hands of deliverance, your hands of mercy. God, and we promise you that we will keep our eyes on you as we bless your name. You know what is going on behind closed doors. You don't slumber, neither do you sleep. Lift the burden, raise the bow down head, heal the troubled mind, confirm the weak, Remember the sick and afflicted. Jesus, have mercy. God, we believe you on today. Save the sinner. Stop the murmuring heart. Make the wounded whole. Heal the sick, sick soul. We bless you, God, and we will keep our eyes on you. So, God, we thank you. We realize, Lord, that you have taught us that we are to respect ourselves as we respect others. We realize, Lord, that everybody needs a lift. Everybody needs to overcome. Everybody needs somebody in the trenches with them and battling with them. So, Lord, we thank you for the people who pray for one another. Lord, we thank you for the people who enjoy the success of somebody else. Lord, we thank you for the people who will not leave us in the dirt, but will come and get us and pick us up out of the muck and miry. Lord, we thank you for using people to encourage us, to embellish us, to lift us, and to enhance us. Lord God, I pray that you put a spark in each one of us to keep first things first. And that first thing, God, is to keep our eyes on you. So right now, God, we claim the victory right now. I claim the victory over every negative thing. I claim the victory over low self-esteem. I claim the victory in this house. I claim the victory, God, that it is done right now. So Lord, we just want to praise you. We just want to praise you now for the accident that we didn't have, the cancer that we were not diagnosed with, or the job that we did not lose. God, we come giving you all honor, glory, and praise. God, for we shall keep our eyes on you, for our eyes are on the one who's able to do all that we can ever ask or think. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
We hope that you've been blessed by this word on today. We thank you and we pray that you would keep your eyes on Jesus. We know that you may be in need of prayer at this time. So if you would like, you can call the church at 713-748-6066. And one of our prayer teams will pray for you and pray with you. If you would like to have join us through prayer for during the week, you may reach out to us for one of our prayer, many prayer calls that's held on Mondays at 7 o'clock p.m. or on Saturdays at 7 o'clock a.m. We have some awesome ministry opportunities here for you. So continue to check us out on Facebook at Boynton Chapel UMC Houston or on YouTube at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church Houston. You may even reach out to us by texting Boynton to 31996. Again, text Boynton to 31996. We also want to encourage you to let you know that our food distribution will be held on Saturday uh, from 10 o'clock a.m. until it's all gone. So come on out if you know of someone or if you are in need of food. We want to thank you for being with us. Let us go to God in prayer for our benediction. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done and all that you shall continue to do, God. For God, we truly do need you now. We need you like never before, God. And we've learned, God, that whatever we go through, that we're gonna stand on your word. We're gonna stand on the firm foundation, God, that you have given unto us. So God, we will keep our eyes on you. So God, we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Goodbye, and we'll see you next time.